Very pleased to have with us in studio once again, Chris Cox, uh, NRA ILA Executive Director. Chris, thanks for coming on the program again tonight. Thanks for having me, Cam. My pleasure. Uh, you know, we've seen over the past, I don't know, year or so, so many Internet rumors <laughs> going around about Second Amendment issues. We had the Senate Bill 2099, which was the, uh, the if you don't register your guns on your tax form, you're going to get you know sued. Right. Um, we've had the Hillary Clinton signed a U.N. treaty. Uh, email that's been going around. Uh, I mean, th th there have been so many of these internet rumors, and you know, periodically now we have to address some of these. One popped up yesterday. We, yesterday you were on the program. We're talking about the McDonald decision. What a great day it was. And then this morning, <laughs> the the uh, the emails start flying. What's going on here? Uh, what is this internet rumor all about, Chris? Well, it's funny. Winston Churchill said that a lie makes it halfway around the world before the truth has an opportunity to put its pants on. Yeah. And that was before the internet. I think a lie has an opportunity <laughs> to get all the way around the world before the truth has, or can can put its pants on. I mean, here here's the truth. Uh, a blog out there said that the National Rifle Association has put a gag order on its board of directors as it relates to Elena Kagan. Well, first of all, uh, that's just outrageous. It's a lie. Just the reality of trying to put a gag on Ted Nugent. I mean, you and I, <laughs> you and I know Ted, and, and that's an outrageous suggestion. But it, it's not true. I mean, board members have always spoken in their individual capacity on issues that are important to them. That's how they end up getting elected to the board in a lot of cases. But when we do communicate a, an official position of the National Rifle Association, it's important for us to speak with a united voice. Uh, does that mean there's a gag order? Of course not. Never has been, never will be. Uh, but again, this is just one of those internet rumors that you know a lot of people read it. They're concerned, mm -hmm. uh, and in the future, I hope they'll pick up the, pick up the phone, give us a call, NRA, ask us if it's true. Go to the website nra.org, nranews.com, nraila.org. All great resources to find out this sort of information. But again, this is just one of those one of those in, uh, internet rumors that's just simply not true. Okay. Now, as I understand it, part of the uh, the rumor is that well. Uh, the reason why this uh, non-existent gag order was issued is because uh, the NRA cut a deal to stay neutral on uh, <laughs> Elena Kagan. We're now in day two. Uh, let me ask you, what do you think of what you've heard of Elena Kagan so far? Uh, not much, to be perfectly honest with you. I think her testimony mirrors her background, which does not give me any hope whatsoever uh, that she's a supporter of the Second Amendment. But it's important to know that NRA has a policy, much like the Republicans in the Senate and mm -hmm. Democrats in the Senate, to withhold our official position until after the confirmation hearings. The truth is we've all been in front of the TV all day uh, watching these questions, listening to our answers, watching the exchange in hopes of, of picking up some additional information. Well, what we've heard is only reinforcing the concerns that we had about Elena Kagan from the get-go. and. Have we made that? Have we made an official position? Not yet, but at the appropriate time, after these confirmation hearings are over, we're going to make our position known. It's the same approach we took with Sonia Sotomayor. We we waited, we listened, we were respectful of the process, and then based on her answers and based on her judicial past, we made a clear decision that she was not acceptable. We opposed her. We opposed her confirmation. Uh, we scored the vote. It mattered, and it does matter. And we're about to make a similar decision, or at least we're going to make a public decision on Elena Kagan uh, in the coming days. Okay. Um, now, speaking of Sonia Sotomayor, uh, in the McDonald decision yesterday, she voted uh, along with three other judges that uh, Second Amendment not incorporated uh, against state and local government action. In essence, she voted to uphold Chicago's gun ban. Well, there's a couple things that are outrageous when it comes to Sonia Sotomayor. One is she went before this same confirmation hearing process and Chairman Leahy asked her a question about gun rights and she said almost verbatim that I understand gun rights are very important to many, many Americans. I have a, a granddaughter who's a member of the National Rifle Association. I have friends who hunt and I fully respect and understand the decision in the Heller case. Seems fairly unambiguous, yeah. uh, at least her words, and then she signs a brief uh, with Breyer that says not only does she vote wrong, uh, which we all recognized that early yesterday, mm -hmm. but then she signed a brief that said there's nothing in the history of the Second Amendment and, and in America that suggests the Second Amendment protects an individual right to own a firearm. I mean, that, that is just shocking. It, it's a blatant disregard for the truth. It's a blatant 180 
to what she told members of the committee and what mm -hmm. she told the United States Senate, that's shocking. But what's also shocking is the President of the United States campaigns as a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. Now, none of us believe it, obviously. Right. But he said that he was always going to protect the Second Amendment. Well, his first Supreme Court justice just threw the Second Amendment in the garbage can, just basically wrote that the Second Amendment should be written out of the Constitution. So who does the President agree with, the majority or with Sotomayor? If he agrees with Sotomayor, then how do you, how do you, how do you marry those two you know, wildly different positions? And if he doesn't and he supports the majority, then why did you put somebody on the court that feels so different? You know, this is just not acceptable. The fact that this decision was five to four is an outrage. That's the most, that's the most important part. Once you get past the historic win, what's shocking is that there, there are four justices who don't believe in the Bill of Rights. Yeah. There are these, these politicians and these judges put their hand on a Bible and they swear to protect the Constitution. They're swearing to protect that individual fundamental right to own a firearm. The fact that it's 5-4 is not acceptable. The fact that we don't have a litmus test of the Constitution. If the Constitution's not a litmus test for judges, what is? What, what's your favorite color? What are you going to ask them if you don't ask them, do they support the basic principles that this country was founded upon? Yeah. And for Elena Kagan, just like Sonia Sotomayor, if you can't say unequivocally that the Second Amendment is an individual right, and I would have voted yes on Heller, I would have voted yes on McDonald, I will vote no on any attempt to, to trash the Constitution of the United States, then you are not fit to be a justice. And the truth is you're not fit to be a judge of any kind. Chris Cox, boy, I, you're on a roll. You want to take over? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's keep going. I, I, but I appreciate the opportunity to come and to speak to your listeners and to speak to NRA members and let them know that uh, I know there's a lot of rumors floating around out there on the Internet. There's some people who are taking some, some cheap shots at the association. Uh, but let's not forget, uh, first of all, everything you read on the Internet is not true. Now, NRANews.com, obviously, that's all gospel. Well, that's what you're hearing, <laughs> not what you're <laughs> – that's, that's right. But – Yesterday was a historic day, and if not for the National Rifle Association of America, it never would have happened. Uh, but as I mentioned on yesterday's show, this is only the end of the beginning. There's going to be a lot of fights moving forward. There's a lot of important work to do. Now is not the time to be divided. Now is the time to move forward with one strong, solid voice to make sure that this right is protected moving forward and to make sure that this Supreme Court eventually has more than a one-vote majority in support of our freedom. That's why elections have consequences. We talked about that in, oh, yeah. in the show last night. Elections do have consequences. Gun owners are responsible for having a Supreme Court this time that stood up to their rights and stood up for the Second Amendment. We have to not only protect that majority, but build on that majority. And I know that working together and with a united message, that's what we'll, that's what we'll do. All right, so no gag order. <laughs> no, no, no deal. Impossible to gag the board of directors of the National Rifle Association. No, no deal of neutrality on Kagan. No deal of, on any any sort whatsoever on Kagan and anything else for that matter. All right, and one final question for you, uh, Mayor Daly's uh, attorney, I guess the city attorney announced today, kind of let fly what what may be some of the uh, new ordinances, including a one gun per house limit. Uh, uh, Chris, in your opinion, uh, would that violate the uh, the right of the people to keep and bear arms? Of, of course it would. Uh, I mean, any time you ask these hypothetical questions, you should replace guns with religious freedom. You should replace it with any of our other constitutionally protected freedoms. And Mayor Daley may not like the Second Amendment, but I don't really care. And I know that gun owners all over America share that view. We have we have politicians. There were politicians after Brown versus the Board of Education who didn't like that decision and tried to fight it. This is no different. This is no different. Those those politicians who swear to protect the second, who swear to uphold the Constitution, are swearing to protect the Second Amendment. And if they don't, you can take it to the bank that the National Rifle Association will be in Chicago, will be in Congress, will be in all 50 state legislatures, and will be in courtrooms all across this country making sure that yesterday's victory is a practical victory and a real victory and that it's not treated as a second-class right or that gun owners are treated as second-class citizens. That's what the NRA is going to do every day moving forward. Chris Cox, NRA ILA's uh, Executive Director, thanks again for coming to the studio. and. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. I doubt it, but uh, I know we'll see you soon. Cam, good being with you. Thank you. Thank you.